Brazil is generally seen by many at least as a success story in development over the past 20 or 30 years ago. But really Brazil's overall success masks what truly is a mosaic of quite different development dynamics and development outcomes. Uh, the map shows clusters of Brazilian municipalities and the changes that have taken place there, different combinations of changes over the past decade or so in terms of economic growth, poverty reduction, and improved distribution of income. Um, the questions, I think the two bottom line questions of territorial development are why this type of map? Why this mosaic? And the second question is what can we do about it? Because all of us would like to see a much more uniform map, a map where most territories or all territories in any given country had you know, the type of positive advance that we would like to see in terms of economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental sustainability. We have done this type of maps in many countries by now, covering over 9,000 municipalities, about 85% of the region's population. And the same pattern show time and again. A very broad summary, I don't have unfortunately the time to go into a lot of detail, but a very broad summary is that slightly uh, l more than one third of the territories seem to be moving in the right direction. Economic growth with social inclusion. Some of them, not very many unfortunately, also with some degree of environmental sustainability. But we have about two thirds of these territories, even, th even in the successful countries like Brazil, which are not doing so well. And 29% of them which are stuck. No growth, no social inclusion, very little if at all environmental sustainability. If you think that this pattern is random, or if you think that this pattern can be explained by one predominant variable, geography, endowment of natural resources, infrastructure, good governance, any one factor, then territorial development is not for you. But if you think that behind this map and these, these patterns of different territorial dynamics, you have a interplay of social structures, localized institutions, and reflexi reflexive social actors, then I think the territorial development approaches can help you understand these maps and what to do about them. <coughs> Here are some definitions. I was asked to be very explicit uh, when, when defining uh, what we meant by territorial development. But first I want to say, why do we need a territorial approach? I think I, s yeah, I jumped, uh, yeah, the definition. Uh, a territory. What is a territory? Well, a space with a socially constructed identity. That's how we define it. And there's two parts to this definition. First, a space. A space refers us to geography, location, distance, resource endowment. But the socially constructed identity part takes us to social structures, to institutions, to actors, that can reflect and try to transform the reality in which they live. Territorial development, there is the definition, you can look at it, but it is starting from this socially constructed identity and, struct and starting from the characteristics of this space, the whole thing about territorial development is about expanding the development potential of different places and different societies. So it is not about improving a single objective. It's not about achieving economic growth only or improving infrastructure or improving education. But it's about expanding the overall potential of these places to move forward in development in the ways 
that the actors of that place s prefer to go. <coughs> when you have many voices, when you have many actors, when you have many forces from within and from without the territory shaping what can take place, the constraints as well as the opportunities, then the only way to move forward really is by local actors figuring out how to deal with the trade-offs and the synergies between different development objectives. How much economic growth? How much environmental sustainability? How much social inclusion? And how they can articulate and deal with the difficult trade-offs between these objectives. That is what territorial development is about. Why a territorial approach? Well, essentially for three reasons, I believe. Per perhaps th there are more, but these are three that I think are very important. One, because we have, we have far more complex rural societies. Second, because we understand development as relations. And because we think that crafting and managing linkages and interaction is the key to having more good outcomes in these mosaics of maps like the one I showed of Brazil. And because it is in these places, it is in territories, that these multidimensional relations come together. I cannot go into a lot of detail about the growing complexity of Latin American rural society, and Bruno Loesch will also talk about this in the context of Africa. But let me look at a couple of factors. You all know about the diversification of rural economies. Rural economies are far more complex today than they were 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. Non-farm rural income is already a large share of the total income of rural households in Latin America, but also in Africa and also in Asia. And even if we look within the rural non-farm sector, we see manufacturing, we see mining, we see services, we see tourism. So it's a far more diverse and far more difficult to manage and to deal uh, rural economy today. A second factor that I want to underline is the urbanization of rural regions. I'm not talking here about the migration of people from the villages to the large cities. I'm talking to what is happening outside the large cities. I'm talking about a rural area that 20 or 30 years ago was all villages and all agriculture. And today, yes, there's many villages still, but there's a lot of small towns, there's a lot of medium cities. And these towns and cities are becoming the engines of development in many of these places. And these towns and these cities, rural towns and rural cities, are very dependent on the rural hinterland. And this is crafting a new space, a new rural space. Here on your uh, left hand, oops, sorry. Let's see if I can get back. On your left hand side, you see for the three different developing regions, the long-term and steep decline of the traditional rural areas, what we call the deep rural. In the middle, you see the rise of the very large cities, places with more than 500,000, 700,000 people. What you see in Latin America is that this increase has plateaued, the same as in Europe, the same as in the United States, the same as in Australia, the same as in Japan. So the deep rural is falling, the large cities are stable. Who is growing? This so-called missing middle, the small and medium provincial towns. So we have a new rural urban space, rurban, as we say in Latin America, right? It's this mix of towns and small cities and the rural hinterland. I could be talking about many other factors, IT, globalization of value chains, globalization of markets, <coughs> the influence of supermarkets, cultural changes such as the new roles of women in, in, in rural societies, climate change, all of this adding to this complexity. But what I want to emphasize is that these new trends are creating new sets of relations, new sets of interactions interactions between the rural and the world be beyond, interactions between different sectors of rural society, of rural economy. Within the households, interactions between members who are engaged in different activities to create 
much more mixed rural livelihoods than we see when that we saw 20 or 30 years. New social actors is no longer just farmers, large or small farmers and food traders. We have bureaucrats, we have NGOs, we have politicians, we had skilled manufacturing workers, et cetera, et cetera. All of these actors in rural society bring new priorities, new visions of development, new visions of politics, where they want to go. New conflicts, new synergies, new opportunities. So why a territorial approach? Because as rural societies develop, we can no longer understand this reality nor transform it if we look at it or act upon it with a single tool or the single lens of a single sector, whether it be agriculture or anything else. So let's get back to the definition of a territory, a space with a socially constructed identity, an identity that is shaped by many, many forces, history, culture, conflict, increasingly private investment, shaping the identities of rural territories, endogenous private investment, but also large private investment coming from the outside, from the outside politics, etc. Complexity can be a very paralyzing force, and you can easily end up in a state of holistic paralysis. So how these successful territories in this mosaic of Brazil and the other countries, how do they manage to be successful in the face of this very difficult environment? We have studied many, many dozen uh, of these territories and worked in many of them with many partners, and we are convinced that the, success, the more successful, quote unquote, they're not, not all of them are perfect at all, but the more successful territories are those that manage to articulate these basic six sets of relations that we seem to find time and time and time again in these successful cases. You could have economic growth if you improve the linkages of a territory with a better market. You can have improved environmental sustainability if you have a good natural resource conservation program. You can reduce poverty if you have a good social policy or a cash transfer program. But if you want to have the three outcomes, if you want to have sustainable development that encompasses growth and social inclusion and environmental sustainability, the most critical factor, the one that cannot be missing, is the last one, a social actor. A social actor in the territory that can make the difficult decisions about how to negotiate these relations, how to shape the forces within, and how to negotiate with the world outside. The successful territories are those that have created these social coalitions or social agreements that can govern their development. There's four caveats to this thing. The first one is that there's no optimal solution. Each territory figures out its own combination. No matter what we do, no matter what the policymaker says, no matter what the donor wants. <laughs> the second one follows from the first one. This is really bottom up. There's no way any technocracy or bureaucracy could engineer this type of process. The third one is that it takes time. It takes a lot of time. So one message to the donor community is that if you're not prepared to go in for the long term, please stay out. <laughs> and the fourth message, the fourth caveat, is that it really, it's extremely difficult to try to put this within the boundaries of a single well-prescribed project. Territorial development is really about two things, in a sense. One, as I said, helping social forces become stronger and become more capable, the social actors. And second, supporting them and creating enabling conditions for them to craft strategies, long-term vis long visions, long-term agreements, 
that allow them to manage these complex relations and to figure out what sort of, uh, what sort of trade offs and synergies they can get between growth, social inclusion, and environmental sustainability. And the best we can do with our projects is really to create enabling conditions for these two things to occur and then let it go or help it go. <coughs> I'll skip this because of time. What are the main challenges? There's many, many challenges of territorial development. It's a silver bullet. It doesn't always work. We have a lot of failures. It's not, you know, this is not the promised land at all. But I want to emphasize two challenges. Really, it's are two faces of the same keyword, capacity. Capacities. Capacities in society. Social actors, local businessmen, local government, local farmers, producer organizations, NGOs in, at the, in the territories, et cetera, et cetera, have great difficulties acting beyond unidimensional boundary or unidimensional issues. It's not only governments and development agencies that are fractioned in the way of seeing societies. The local businessman is concerned about how his firm will do in his market. The local NGO agency is concerned about whatever issue they're working on. So developing the capacity of social forces in the territories to collaborate and to be able to act beyond unidimensional boundaries is a very difficult challenge. The second one is to get different government agencies, different government sectors, uh, different levels of government, national, provincial, local, to work together. As you can imagine, territorial development is not about the Ministry of Agriculture or the Ministry of Infrastructure or the Ministry of whatever. It really requires to harness the forces of different sectors of government and different po policies and different budgets. And it's very, very difficult to get coordination across government agencies. So that's a big challenge. <coughs> These challenges become even more difficult when we're talking about what we call localized poverty traps. In every single country, even the most successful one in terms of economic growth, poverty reduction, et cetera, et cetera, we find these places, these red dots in the map of Mexico, which have been stuck there for decades and decades. No growth, no poverty reduction, people getting out because there's no choices, et cetera. So doing territorial development in this context is, like any other approaches, particularly challenging and particularly difficult. So what can you do if you're interested in supporting the agenda of territorial development? What can agencies such as those? Probably many things, but I would like to suggest three. First, we have been doing territorial development. By we, I don't mean just REMIS, but I mean many organizations, many governments, many provinces. IFAD has projects. GIZ has <laughs> projects, et cetera, et cetera, in Latin America. So in a sense, it's a natural experiment because this did, not, this did not come out of a single agency that wrote the book and that say, this is how you do territorial development. This has multiple centers of origin. And critically examining this experience and trying to extract lessons, I think, could be very valuable, certainly for Latin America, but also perhaps for Africa and Asia. Second. You cannot talk about complexity seriously and not invest more in trying to understand it. And we really, really know very little yet, despite the efforts of agencies such as IDRC, we still know very little about what is shaping these maps. In this map, it's not that the worst combinations are in those places that are always poor. We have very rich places, very well endowed places, where you have enormous economic growth with very little social inclusion. And just across the valley, we have similar places which are doing much better. Why? We really need to invest much more in understanding this complexity. What are the drivers? What are the dynamics? Complexity requires, 
its investment because under conditions of, of complexity, ignorance can indeed be very expensive. <coughs> The third is that I think there's a lot of space for South-South collaboration, learning, uh, joint research, et cetera. We're trying to do something like this with NEPAD and some colleagues in Asia. But I think there's a lot of opportunities for talking across the developing world. And I would like to suggest that this dialogue, South-South dialogue and South-South collaboration could be particularly fruitful if we focus on instrumental problems that one finds, when I talk to my colleagues in China or in South Africa, we see the same issues coming up. How do we build capacity in local societies to act across unidimensional boundaries? Second, how do we get coordination in government? And third, extremely important, how can we sustain development processes beyond the time boundaries of political processes and administrative cycle. Political time and administrative time is a reality. It will not change. But we need to find a way where we can sustain these processes beyond this cycle. Otherwise, we're basically dead. Thank you very much. <coughs>